Do your arms hurt from carrying boxes all day because your weird second cousin Craig asked if you could help him move his giant collection of worms on a string and you were too socially awkward to say no and now you've already made your third trip down the street with fuzzy worms poking out of the boxes and all the neighbors are looking at you weird and you just wish to blend into your surroundings and never emerge again? Well then I have just the thing for you. Try this new sunflower crochet cardigan, become a flower and vanish never to be seen again. It's tutorial time. Woo woo, welcome everyone. Hello. Today I will show you how to create this beautiful sunflower crochet cardigan that I created two videos ago. So get your crochet hooks ready. Before I jump into the tutorial though, I want to quickly explain how this tutorial will be structured and also there will be a little disclaimer because I'm an idiot. Let's start with the structure. First of all, my bird is singing. First of all, I will not be making an entire cardigan for this tutorial. If I were to do that, this video would probably come out in 2029 and my bank account would beat the shit out of me. So I will not be doing that. I will be making two granny squares so that I can show you how to make the squares. Wow crazy and also how to join them together and how to do the cuffs so by the end of this you will have every all the knowledge you need to make this cardigan yes on your own but with my help you know yeah for the same reason i also won't be making different layouts for different sizes because i can't try them out i will however tell you how you can modify the layout yourself and what you need to pay attention to so that you can change the size more to that later though. First to the structure. This tutorial consists of two types of instructions. I will first of all for every step insert a picture of written instructions. So if you're experienced with crocheting or just prefer written instructions you can just skip to these timestamps or you can look at the YouTube chapters. But after I'm done explaining here, stay where you are. I, I'm looking at you Margaret. And after that a video tutorial will follow where I show you how to actually do each step. And now onto the disclaimer. I am not a professional. I have never written a pattern before this one. So even though I hope there will be no mistakes, there may be some in the terminology. If so, feel free to tell me in the comments. I will make a pinned comment with all the corrections. So look out for that. Maybe I messed up. Maybe I didn't. So maybe there's no pinned comment. I, I don't know. And I also think I am very bad at explaining. I once did like an apprenticeship stuff in a elementary school and I tried to explain math to the children and I think they were more confused than before so i really hope you will be able to follow please don't throw rocks at me i'm doing my best over here if there's anything you don't get please write a comment send me a dm on instagram i'm going to help you i will do my best to get you to this point where you can wear a beautiful sunflower crochet card again also this is obviously a, a free tutorial it's on youtube wow just i don't know Leave a comment, leave a like, share this video, subscribe. It just helps out a lot. And if you do make this cardigan and post it on Instagram, tag me over there if you want. You don't have to, but I would just love to see your creations. Okay, now onto the actual tutorial. First of all, here's a list of, of everything you need. Got everything? No? Well, then what are you waiting for? Go on, get your supplies. Sorry, we just quickly have to wait for them to get back. Okay, I think here they are. Let's begin. Okay, now let's talk about the layout real quick. This is the one I made for myself. It consists of 120 granny squares. Here's how it looks on me. I'm this tall and weigh this much. Wow, very nice, very cool. And if you want to change the size, here's how you can go about doing that. Let's start with the sleeves. If you want to change the sleeves, if you add more granny squares right here in this direction, then your sleeves will get longer. And if you add more over here your sleeves will get wider the only thing you have to pay attention to here is that when you add more granny squares here so this line needs to be an uneven number you need an uneven number because you have to have an even number wow so that the same amount of granny squares are attached to the front as they are to the back plus one that will be this one because one of the granny squares will be attached to the back and to the front. So half of this granny square will be attached to half of this and half of this. So that's the only thing you need to pay attention to here. If you add more granny squares over here and here, then your cardigan will get longer. Here you just have to pay attention to that your front panel has the same length as your back panel. So that the front and back of your cardigan have the same length, you know. If you add more squares over here, 
then your cardigan will get wider. These are the granny squares that will be on your shoulder. So if you have wider shoulders, just add more in these directions. Also just pay attention to that if you add more granny squares to the front, you also need to add more to the back. The gap right here should fit around your neck. And I think that for most people, two granny squares is probably enough. So you probably won't need to change this, but you can if you were to add more squares right here, you could just move these like one out and then you would have more space for your neck and i think this is all you need to know to change the size if there are any questions please always feel free to write a comment or send a message on instagram i will help you there i will respond and then obviously if you change the layout to get a bigger or smaller size you will also need a different amount of yarn but i think that's obvious um yeah and now if you have your layout ready we can go on to step number one to actually crocheting and actually start making the squares yay let's go Okay, so for step number one, you're going to need your 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is the one that we will use for the entirety of the square. And also you are going to need a pair of scissors and your brown yarn. Okay, and we're going to start by chaining four. So we're going to make a loop. Put that onto our hook and then we chain four. This one loop that we have on our hook right now doesn't count. So we will start counting from here on. Yarn over. Pull through your loop, and that is one. Again, two, three, and four. Okay, now that we have our chain four, we are going to slip stitch into the first chain. So we will need to find our loop of the first chain right here. So I'll hook through, yarn over, and then pull through both loops at the same time. And then we are going to chain one. And now we are going to make eight single crochets into the middle. So we will need to find this middle gap from our little circle that we created. Hook through, yarn over, pull through the circle, and then yarn over and through both loops. And now we are going to repeat that seven more times. Hook through the middle, yarn over, pull through, and through the two loops. That is number two, three, seven, and eight. Next up, we need to slip stitch into our first single crochet. And if you're not entirely sure which one of these is your first one, you can just count backwards from your hook. So this one again doesn't count. So we'll start counting right here. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is our first single crochet. So we will insert our hook there and then yarn over and pull through both loops at the same time. And now we have this little beautiful circle. Yay. Next up, we will chain three. One, two, three. And now we are going to make four unfinished or incomplete double crochets into the same stitch that we just slip stitched through. So yarn over, hook through the stitch, get your yarn, pull through the first two loops, and then we're going to leave it at that. And now we are going to repeat that three more times. So yarn over, through the stitch, get your yarn, through the first two loops. Now we have three on our hook. Two more times, yarn over there. And one last time. And now you should have five loops on your hook. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops at the same time. And that is our leaf number one. Now we chain two. And now we need to make five incomplete or unfinished double crochets into the next single crochet. So again, yarn over through your single, your next single crochet, get your yarn and then through the first two loops. Now we have two loops on our hook and now we need to make this four more times. Now you should have six loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all six and then chain two again. And now we are going to repeat that six more times so that in the end we have eight leaves. And that should be a leaf number eight. Let's count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's looking good. That's our last leaf. Now don't forget to chain two in the end as well. And now we need to slip stitch into our first leaf and we can just slip stitch into the chain that we made at the beginning. So just insert your hook into the chain and pull your yarn through both loops. Chain one, and then you can cut off your yarn 
pull it all the way through and that is our first row it should look something like this very nice now if you are making the same size that i made for myself i wish you lots and lots of fun with making 120 of these <laughs> Well, if you change the size to a bigger one, I wish you even more fun. But I will see you again for row number two. Okay, row number two. For this one, we are going to need this darker yellow color. And we are going to tie this onto our first row at like one of these spaces between our leaves. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I always like to choose the one where my tail end is. So I'm going to tie it on right here. You can just do a simple knot to secure it. And then we can start our second row. And we do that with chaining three. We get our yarn through. And this again doesn't count. So we'll start counting now. One, two, three. Three. And now the leaves basically work the same as the ones we did for the first row. This again counts as one unfinished or incomplete double crochet and we need to make four more of those. So yarn over, pull your yarn through and then through the first two loops. Like this now you should have again five loops on your hook and over pull through all five and now we chain only one between every leaf like this now we are going to make another one in the next space between our brown leaves so right here again yarn over pull your yarn through and then through the first loops and over get your yarn through the first loops and we again want five of these unfinished or incomplete double crochets and should have six loops on our hook by the end of it so now we need to repeat this three more times just like this yarn over through all six loops chain one and now our next leaf we're going to make in the same space that we just made this one so yarn over insert your hook into the same space get your yarn Pull through the first two loops and now again repeat this four more times. Chain one. So now we have two leaves in this one space and we want two leaves in every single one of these spaces from our first row. So now we are going to make our next leaf in the next space. We're going to make two leaves there and two leaves in the next one, two leaves in the next one. And then our very last leaf we are going to make in this space, the first one where we started so that we also have two leaves there. But through making our first and last leaf in the same space, we then in the end don't have like a weird looking gap right here that's why we start with only one but you want a total of 16 leaves in the end so now just continue to make two leaves in every one of these spaces and then i will see you again when you've done two in this last one right here when you finish your last two leaves in this last space right here you should now have 15 leaves so let's count real quick 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 that seems to be right so two in each gap and now we only need to make one last leaf in this first space right here where we started Again, don't forget to chain one in the end. And now we have 16 leaves, two in each gap. That's looking nice. And now we only need to slip stitch again into this first chain that we made. Chain one and cut off your yarn. And now it should look like this. Onto the next row. Okay, and for this one we need our lighter yellow. This one is a different yarn strength than the one that I used for my cardigan and the one that you will also use for yours, but they didn't have the right one anymore. So I just bought this so that I can make this tutorial. So my third row will look a bit thinner, a bit different than yours. Don't worry about that. You did nothing wrong. I did. I'm, I'm the criminal here. So again, tie your yarn onto the second row, again, into any of these gaps between your leaves. I'm going to do it again right here between our first and last one. And now we kind of do the same thing we did for row one and two a third time. So get your yarn, chain three, one, two, three. And now we are going to make some more leaves. Yeah, this again counts as one unfinished double crochet or incomplete double crochet. So we're going to just make the same leaves as before. So again, we need four more unfinished double crochets for this leaf. 
yarn over, get your yarn, pull through the first loops, yarn over, get your yarn, yarn not yarn, this isn't a yarn party, pull through first loops, <laughs> sorry about that, yarn over, pull through first loops, the first two, yarn over, through the first two, and now you should have five loops on your hook, pull through all five, and now we are going to chain two again between the leaves like this and we only want one leaf per space between the leaves of row two so our next leaf we're going to make in the next space okay and now you can tell that this one will look bigger with your project and it will look better with with the yarn you are going to use but i'm I, they didn't have the one i needed so now the third row is going to look a bit smaller but that's fine um onto the next leaf Yarn over, now we need five unfinished or incomplete double crochets again, like this. Now we have six loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all six, chain two. And now again, we are going to make the next leaf in the next space. So that in the end, we are going to have also 16 leaves for the third row. Okay, and that was the last one. Again, don't forget, don't forget your little chain two in the end. And now we should have 16 leaves for row number 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Very nice. Again, slip stitch through the first chain we made from the first leaf. Chain 1, cut your yarn. And that is row number 3. And now yours should look somewhat like this. Not exactly like this. Yours should look better. <laughs> because I use different yarn. But um, yeah, this is the second to last row, and now only some green is missing. And that leads us to row number four, for which we are going to need our green. We will have bought three types of green, I suppose. So just make, obviously, as many with each color as you need. I'm going to show you with this dark green now. We start off the same way, just tie it onto your row number three at any point. And now now we've made enough leaves, now we can stop finally. And for that, we start by chaining four this time. So one, two, three, four. This counts as one treble crochet now, and we need three in total for this one. So we are going to make two more. So yarn over twice. Insert your hook in the same gap right here. Pull through the first two loops, through the next two and then through the last two. Now we have two, and we need one more. Yarn over twice, get your yarn through the first two, through the next two, and through the last two. Just like this. Very nice. Okay, this is going to be one of the corners in the end, but for now we are going to continue in, in the next space. And in that we are going to make three double crochets. So yarn over once, get your yarn through the first two, and through the last two, now two more times, yarn over, first two loops, next two loops, once more yarn over, like this. Then we're going to go to the next space and we are making no chains between these spaces. So for the next one, we are going to start like a double crochet, so yarn over, get your yarn. Now you have three loops on your hook and now instead of going through the first two and then the next two, we are going to go through all three at the same time. So yarn over and through all three loops. And we also want this three times in each gap, so we are going to make this two more times. Yarn over, through all three, one more, yarn over, all three loops at the same time. Just like this. Then in the next we are going to make three double crochets again. And now we are going to make our first complete corner. So in the next gap, we need first three treble crochets. The corners are the only times where we chain, where we need some chains. And right here we are going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we are going to make three more treble crochets in the same space that we are in right now. So we yarn over twice, insert hook into the same space, go through the first two loops, 
through the next two and through the last two. And now two more times. And that is going to be the corner. And now we're going to just repeat the same steps that we did right here. So next space, three double crochets. Next space, these like, with these ones, I actually don't know the name, but start as a double crochet, go through all three loops at the same time, three times, and then again, three double crochets, and now we are going to make our second corner, just the same way we did right here. So three treble crochets first, then chain three, one, two, three, and three more treble crochets into the same space. And now we're just going to repeat that same process until we are right here in the last gap and you should end right here with three double crochets. And now we only need to finish this corner right here. So we are going to make three treble crochets in this first gap where we started. And then we are going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we only need to slip stitch into our chain four right here. Chain one, put it on, and that would be your first granny square. Congratulations! Yeah, woo. Okay, and now you only have to make this 119 more times. Have fun with that, and good luck with that one. Wish much, much strength to your hands and to your sanity. And then I will see you again once you're done with all your squares. And then I will show you how to join them together, and then how to make the sleeves, cu sleeve cuffs, and stuff. And then you have a beautiful crochet cardigan. Very nice. See you then. Okay, now that you've probably lost all of your brain cells while making at least 120 of these, um, welcome back. <laughs> now onto the last two steps. Now it's finally time to join these together. I do recommend blocking your granny squares at this point and then I also will be making five separate pieces that we will then join together to make the cardigan. I recommend blocking your squares now, then blocking the five bigger pieces that you will make and then I recommend blocking the whole thing in the end again. You are going to need your squares obviously, some white yarn and I recommend using now a four millimeter crochet hook. This is optional. You can use just the same one that you use for your granny squares. I recommend using a size up because it will just give this entire thing a nicer look. And I also do recommend to not do your stitches too tight. So I recommend crocheting quite loosely because if you can see right here, I did these stitches. This was I think the first row that I did and I did my stitches very tight. So the stitches are very small and there's not much room for the squares to stretch out to where they are supposed to be. And then right here I learned from my mistakes and made the stitches a bit more loosely and I think it just looks nicer and you will get this effect also by using a crochet hook that's size bigger so I do recommend using that but if you only have one that's fine too I just then especially would recommend doing your stitches very loosely okay now onto the assembling part you will be making these five separate pieces so this is the layout that you will be working with you want the right side of your granny squares facing up just lay them out like the layout is supposed to be and then we are just going to start by making our first row we're going to take our white yarn making a loop putting that loop onto our hook and now we are only going to use the back loops of our round squares we are going to take the the second chain from the chain three right here so that will be this stitch right here insert your hook into the back loop like this and now we are going to need to find the same stitch right here at our left granny square. Make sure that your white yarn stays in the middle between these two. And then we are going to find the same loop. That would be this one. We're going to also insert our hook into the back loop like this. Now we have three loops on our hook, two green, one white. And then we are going to just pull through all three of these loops. And now we're just going to work our way up. So we are going to take our right granny square, we look for the next stitch, that's this one, insert our hook into the back loop, and white yarn in the middle, and then our right granny square, next back loop of the next stitch, insert our hook yarn over and through all three loops. And now you're just going to work your way up until you've reached the second chain of your chain right here in these corners. And just like that, you've joined two granny squares together. Very nice. Okay, and now these are the only two that I have, but you would just now take your next two, put them right here where they belong, and then just continue doing the same thing. Thank you. 
Okay, and now that we have your entire cardigan assembled, the only thing left to do is to make the sleeve cuffs and bottom cuffs and yeah, that. <laughs> I'm going to show you how the stitches will work on these two granny squares and then after that I will insert again the written instructions where you can look at with how many chains you need to start and how many stitches you need to go along your cardigan because this will depend on whether you're working on your sleeve cuffs and your bottom cuff or on the, I don't know what this is called, but this. But right here I'm going to show you the, the principle of how to do it. Okay. Okay, so we again need our 4mm crochet hook, our white yarn, and now we are going to pretend that this is the bottom of our cardigan. So again, you want to start right side facing out, and then you want to tie your white yarn to your granny square, and we are also only going to use the back loops from here on out. And then for the bottom cuff, we are going to chain 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven and now we are going to turn and we are going to go back down using again only the back loop so you're going to insert your hook into the second loop from your hook so this would be the first loop we are going to ignore that we're going to insert our hook into the second and then we are going to slip stitch so we yarn over and go through both stitches at the same time and then we're going to do slip stitches all the way until we're back at the bottom so insert yarn into the next back loop and go through both stitches. And just like that, we're just going to work our way back down. Once you've reached the bottom, we are now going to go two stitches along our granny square. So we are going to slip stitch into the two next stitches. Insert your hook into the back loop of your granny square, the next one. And slip stitch, and then again the next one, slip stitch, and now we went two stitches along our granny square. Now we are going to turn our work, and we are going to go back up again using only the back loops. And now we are going to ignore these two slip stitches that we made into our granny square, and we are going to insert our hook into the third stitch from our hook. So this is one, two, three into the back loop and then slip stitch and now we are just going to work our way back up and you should come to a total of six slip stitches that you're making back up now and again i recommend doing your stitches quite loosely and once we've reached the top we are going to chain one turn our work and now we are just going to go back down again Congratulations! You did it! You made a beautiful sandflower crochet cardigan. I'm very proud of you. Good job! Nicely done! Now we can all be beautiful together. Yay! At least I hope you managed to do this because I still think I'm very bad at explaining. Again, if anything was unclear, please write a comment, send me a DM on Instagram. We, we will do this together. You will be fine. This is all on me, but um, yeah, I will get you here if there was anything unclear. Thanks for watching, as always. Thank you for all the recent support. There have been a lot of new subscribers and it just makes me very happy that you all like my videos. I hope you have fun with your new beautiful crochet cardigan. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Thank you for being here with me and supporting my chaos. That's very nice of you. I appreciate it a lot. It, it really means a lot. Every nice comment and like and view and subscription. That's the word. So all of your support means a lot. Thank you so much. And I will see you next video. Goodbye.